Hi, I'm Kitty from the Nexo Standards Marcom team, and today I'm here with Lee Jones, who is Managing Director for Northern Europe at Worldcom. Thanks for joining me, Lee. So, could you tell me a little bit about um, what you think are the key trends sure. um, for the future of retail? Yeah, I think retail's been through a really difficult time over the last few years, as everybody's aware. There's obviously been the disruption through COVID, but for me, businesses still need to innovate, and we've seen a lot of that come through right now. So we're seeing a big focus on new services. So everybody's pretty much aware of what Amazon are doing with their Amazon Go you know, stores. And particularly in the UK, we're seeing that new experience start to take off, but consumers are having to adapt to a different way of actually buying goods and services. Um, I think also for us as well, we're seeing a lot around new channel development. So we're seeing companies invest in things like live commerce. We're seeing you know, people look at chatbots. And we're seeing people you know, spending a bit of time looking at voice commerce as well to see how people can use some of their natural characteristics to actually place orders for things. But there's a huge amount of change coming through. I think the other things we're seeing as well are you know, areas of focus around loyalty because today arguably the loyalty process for retailers can be a bit clunky for a consumer when it comes to actually registering for schemes. But at the same time, we're also seeing investment in new payment methods. So when I look at stuff like cashless payments, now even COVID had an effect on the overall cashless volume going through contactless rates and comparative to cash have continued to rise and grow and that just seems to be a trend that will continue but for me innovation is key because delivering that seamless consistent reliable experience is the thing that's really important to encourage shoppers to keep coming back to brands and increase that loyalty. Can you tell me a little bit more about how you as a pay tech company are helping mm. merchants to achieve these goals? Yeah, from our side, we've got we've identified a few areas, but probably there's, there's three or four that I'll probably touch on today. So one of those is around mobility. So what we find is that you know the second biggest reason why people abandon a shopping journey and actually don't complete a purchase is because of queues. So we're getting a lot of interest and, and companies looking to see how they can actually serve customers at the point that's most convenient for them actually delivering a more personal experience as well. And I think that's really important because it's that personal touch that makes somebody feel that they actually want to come back time and time again. Building on that a little bit, as I mentioned earlier about loyalty schemes, we've got a service called Tap and Collect, which actually allows people to, if they've got a loyalty card in their wallet, it means that when they come to pay, they don't need to present their phone once for payment, and again for loyalty, they can do everything in one tap because the wallet will actually connect through the payment to enable the points to get registered. So again, trying to make it a more seamless experience because today when people join loyalty schemes as well, they find that it's a piece of paper they have to fill in, they can find it a little bit maybe intrusive, they're a bit time poor. So for us, we're also doing a push mechanism as well. So we push a message to somebody's device to say, would you like to join the loyalty scheme? If so, please enter your email address. So again, just trying to make it a bit slicker and a bit more effective for people. And I think the final couple of areas I'd like to touch on, one is around what we call scan and pay. So this is where, you know, different to mobility in this, the way we normally talk about things where payment terminal are taken to a customer, but actually letting the consumer use their own device. So by using what we call a progressive web application, people can scan a QR code, then scan goods as they walk around the shop themselves, and then at the point of payment, actually make a decision whether to do it on their own device or use that device to interact with the pods terminal as well. But there's, there's a huge plethora of different ideas and options we've got in these areas. And how would you say Nexo fits into this landscape of really digital value as well? Yeah, so for us, we do a lot of work with really big merchants, so people like Carrefour, Ikea and, and Subway. And if I look at Subway in particular, you know, they're quite a complex business in some respects in that they've got 2,600 outlets across 15 different countries in Europe. And what they want to do is have a very simple way of managing payments, in, but in a consistent way, but actually where they reduce the burden on their teams as well. So having a standard you know, way of working and using the Nexo platform standards as an underlying sort of you know, baseline, it means it's one pause integration, one acquirer accreditation. So it means for them they can deploy one service and one solution to many countries and not have to have multiple integrations, multiple accreditations. And there's a lot of cost and burden that disappears as a result of that. So we're really proud of the work that we've done with them. But for us moving forward, you know, we'll end up doing a lot more of that based on Nexo, I'm sure. And, and with international merchants, I think there's a huge amount of benefit for them. So thank you so much, Lee, for your input. And thanks again for watching.